Hey, what is going on guys? It's Dwarf here. Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get your PS4 saves from your jailbroken PS4s ported over to run on your jailbroken PS5. So port your saves from your PS4 over to your jailbroken PS5. So this is something that's obviously going to be quite niche because there's not a lot of people who have jailbroken PS4s and PS5s. But surprisingly, this is the thing that's been the most requested from me over the past few weeks is to do a guide on this and it's now possible thanks to the PS5 debug payload and the offline account activator. So what I've got here is I'm on my PS4 right here with a save file for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now you can use any game that you want. So I'm just using this one as an example. So this is a modded save that I have installed on my jailbroken PS4. It's got pretty much maxed out uh, items as you can see right here. We've got unlimited torches, pretty much unlimited throwing knives and the save I believe is completed. So it's got access to the full map. So you can do this with a modded save file that you've got on your PS4 that you want to port over to your jailbroken PS5 or just a regular save file where you've been going through the game and you want to continue your progress over on the PS5. So in order to do this, first thing we need to do is take a note of the actual save file that we want to copy over to the PS5. So if I go to load, you can see we've got an auto save here and the manual save. So these are basically the same saves. I'll just go ahead and port the manual save over to my jailbroken PS5. So you just want to note that what that save file is. So in this case, it's manual save one. That's the one that I want to copy over to my PS5. So from here, we can go ahead and close out of the game and open up the Apollo save tool on your PS4. You can find it in the homebrew store if you don't already have it installed. So we're going to load up this and check to make sure that our account is activated. We need to get our account ID. So if we head over to the user tools, and then from here we can go to activate PS4 accounts. So I've got two accounts on my PS4. My main account is the bottom one. This one is activated, so it's got the padlock symbol and it has an ID in brackets 2584CC. That is an activated account. If your account looks like the top one here, which is the account that I'm signed in on right now, and it's all zeros, then that means it's a local account and it's not been activated. So if you have an account that looks like this, you will need to activate it in order to get this to work. So you can just select it with X and then it will give you a random ID that you can use to activate the account with. You can just go ahead and click done and it will activate the account with that ID. However, what you might want to do is use a real PSN account ID to activate the account with. So an ID from a PSN account that you have that way your save files will be transferable from your jailbroken PS4s and jailbroken PS5s over to any other console that also has that account on it. So any retail consoles that has that PSN account on it will be able to load the saves from your jailbroken PS4 or PS5, which is a pretty handy thing to have. So I'll show you guys how to grab the PSN account ID of a real PSN account that you have access to. If you're just going to activate using a random account, you can just skip this part. But in order to get the ID of a real PSN account, if we switch over to our computer real quick, we can download this uh, remote play client, this third party remote play client, download the source. This will be linked in the description. So you download the tar.gz file, which is right here. If we open this up, we're going to go in here and there's a scripts folder. And in the scripts folder, there is two scripts here. There's a Go script and a Python script for PSN account ID. I'm going to use the Python script because I have Python installed and I'll copy that over to my desktop. I'll right click on my desktop and open in terminal and then copy the name of the script right here. And we're going to type in Python and then paste the script and press enter. Now it may ask you to install a missing dependency with a pip installer, just say yes and let it install that if it's not already installed. And then it should run the script right here. Once you get the script running, you just hold down the control key on your keyboard and click the link right here or just copy and paste it into your browser to get it to open up here. So what you want to do is sign into your PSN account. This is the official PlayStation sign in. So we're just going to sign into our account. Let it do its thing. And then once you get onto this page with redirect, you want to copy the link in the URL bar and paste it back into the script and then press enter. And then that will grab all of the account information, including your user ID, which is your account ID. You just want to highlight that account ID and right click to copy it. And then once you have it copied, you want to enter it into a decimal to hexadecimal converter. So that I'll leave this one in the description on rapidtables.com. You want to paste in the decimal version of your user ID, your account ID, and then click the button to convert it to a hexadecimal number. 
And then this is the one that you want to enter to activate your account. So this is the account ID of your real PSN account. Okay, there we go. So I've got the account ID entered. We can press done. And there we go, account successfully activated. So you can use a real account ID or you can use a randomly generated one. So once it's activated, it will require a reboot. So we'll just go ahead and restart our PS4. Okay, so after rebooting the PS4, you can see the account is now locked. It has been successfully activated with that ID. So note down that ID on your computer, type it in somewhere in Notepad on your computer so that you have a copy of that ID so that when we activate the account on the PS5, we use the same ID so that the save files will be transferable between the PS4 and the PS5. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and close out of the Apollo save tool. We're going to head over to the settings. We're going to go down to application save data management, and then we're going to go to save data in system storage and copy to USB storage device. So make sure you plug in a USB drive into your PS4 that you can copy the save file to. And we're going to go to copy to USB storage device. I'm going to select Assassin's Creed Mirage and I'm going to select the save file that I want to copy, which is, if you remember, it was the manual save one. So we're going to select that option and copy it and that will copy the save over to my USB. So now I can unplug that USB drive and plug it into the computer. OK, so moving on to the PS5, we've got the same game here installed on the PS5. It needs to be on at least a higher game version, either the same game version or a higher game version than the version that we were on on the PS4 for the saves to work. From here, we need to go ahead and of course load the exploit. So we'll head over to our internet browser, load up Idle Sauce's exploit here, uh, his host. So we'll load up the Idle Sauce host, run the jailbreak, get everything up and running. Okay, and once we get onto the payload selector, we're gonna select the PS5 debug payload. So we're gonna select that option. PS5 debug, loaded, coded by CTN and Sistro. Special thanks to Golden. So there it is, it's up and running. And you also want to note down the IP address. So you can see right here, listening on 192.168.137.226. So that's the IP address of my PS5. We're gonna note that down as well and then switch back over to our computer. And then we're gonna use the PS5 offline account activator. So this will be linked in the video description. I'll either just have a, a Mediafire link for it or it'll be a GitHub link to the official version. What we wanna do is run this right here. PS5 offline account activator and we're going to enter the IP address from our PS5 so that was 192.168.137.226 and then we're going to hit connect and that's going to connect us through PS5 debug so there we go connected and then we're going to click on get users which will grab the account IDs of all the user accounts that are on the PS5 okay and on this one you can see we have two accounts we've got our modded PS5 account which is the account I'm using the one I'm going to activate, and then this is my main account that's already activated. So I'm going to replace this ID with the ID from our PS4 account. So the same ID that we have on our PS4 account, we want to enter as the ID to activate this account on our PS5 with. So we're going to go ahead and set and activate. And there we go, that is done. Now, if you keep timing out while trying to activate the account, that's a common issue. This is a test version of the PS5 account activator. It's not a complete release yet. So there are some issues. So if you keep timing out while trying to activate the account, what you can do is try to send the PS5 debug with a payload injector instead of activating the option in the exploit host. So basically use Netcat GUI to send the payload manually over the network. It seems to be more stable when you do it that way for whatever reason. So that is another option uh, or you just keep trying until it eventually activates the account. So once again, we're just gonna do the same thing that we did on the PS4 now, which is to reboot the console after activation we're going to reboot so go ahead and give it a restart okay and after the reboot you'll know that your account's activated on the ps5 because you'll have an options menu on the account when you're going to sign in if you hit the options button you'll have login as online busy and appear offline that means the account has been activated so from here we can sign into the account and we'll go ahead and run this time the eta hen payload so that we can enable our fake packages and of course our FTP server. Okay, so once we're on the payload selector, we're gonna run the ETA hen payload, just the regular one. Get that up and running. Okay, there we go. So we've got an FTP server running now and our fake packages are enabled. Okay, so now we can run the game. So we're gonna run Assassin's Creed Mirage. Okay, so we now have the game loaded up on the PS5. I don't have any saves on the PS5 version. So we're going to create a new save file. 
Okay, so I just had to skip past all the cutscene stuff here. So I'm actually into the game. So what we're trying to do here is just create the equivalent save file to the one that we had on the PS4 so that we can then replace it on the PS5. So Assassin's Creed is quite particular about the save files. You can't just replace manual save one with manual save three or with an auto save. So it needs to be an equivalent. So we need to make the same save file basically, manual save one. So if I press the touchpad button here and press it again to go into the menu, we can create a manual save, create new save file. And there we go, we now have manual save one. And I could create more, I could create manual save two and so on and so forth. So you just want to create a save so that you have the same save that you had on the PS4. So the PS4 save was manual save one. I now have a new save on the PS5 that's also manual save one. So I can swap this save file out now with the one from my PS4. So that's how this works. So all we're going to do is just quit out of the game now and connect via FTP. We'll switch over to the computer again and open an FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP. And then of course we're going to enter our PS5's IP address again. So 226 and then the port number is 1337. Quick connect and then we're going to head to the user folder. Then we're going to head to the home folder and then the accounts. So these, these are your accounts right here. So the top account is usually your first account, then your second account and so on. So in this case it's the second account that I'm doing this on. So I'm going to go into that folder. I'm going to go into the save data. And then here's the title ID of Assassin's Creed Mirage. So I'll go in there and here's all of our save files. So it's created a bunch of auto saves, but here's our manual save one and manual save two. So if we check our USB drive right here, you can see we've got our PS4 save data that we copied over. So this is it right here, manual save one. So this is our save file from our PS4 that we want to swap. So the only difference here you can see is that the saves on the PS5 have this SDIMG underscore. So we basically just need to rename uh, the file on the PS4 save to the same name. So that's going to be this file here. We're going to rename that to SDIMG. And then we just replace the save file. We just take this save file, we copy it in, we overwrite, always use this action. We overwrite the save with our save from our PS4. That's copied over, transfer finished. And normally this save file would show up as corrupted, except because we've activated both accounts on the PS4 and the PS5 with the same account ID, the saves should work on the PS5. So all we need to do is switch back over to the PS5, load up the game again, and that save file that we created, that new save we created on the PS5, should now be the same save file that we had on the PS4. And here it is, manual save one. It's now showing as House of Wisdom, 8 hours, 52 minutes, 43 seconds. That is our save right there from the PS4 that we can now load. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, we're loaded up. Same exact save file as before. Same items here, unlimited torches, throwing knives. But as you can see, we are indeed on the PS5 this time loading the same save file. So that is all indeed working. We'll go ahead and go into the menu here. As you can see, all the items, this is exactly the same save file that we just were using on our jailbroken PS4 that we've now got working here on our jailbroken PS5. And you can do this with any PS4 game, any PS4 saves that you want to port over to the PS5 using the same method. So it should definitely get easier in future, but this is at least a way that you can do it right now until we get some better solutions. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.